Current Affairs commentator Einar Tanjin joins us now from Beijing. So Einar, 15 years of China ASEAN partnership taking into account today's global issues like trade. How important is this block, especially when you put this regional grouping together with China? They've certainly seen some ups and downs. How would you describe relations today? Well, uh, I mean, it's always about trade and security. And what you have is this kind of irritant in the South China Seas, which is being kind of mixed up by these uh, freedom of navigation uh, patrols that the U.S. is putting in. Uh, and then you have trade. And trade is uh, really the big issue, especially with all the uncertainty that is being uh, put out there by Donald Trump about what the future of the multilateral trading uh, world will be. Uh, people are looking very, very closely at RCEP. They, obviously, TPP is in effect. And it, what it really marks is the beginning of the Asian century and the end of American leadership, uh, especially on areas of uh, economics and world development. You mentioned that free trade agreement, um, still working out some details. What are some challenges that remain before that is a done deal? And you also mentioned the South China Sea, so two-part question here. Um, they're close to coming together with a code of conduct there. If all the countries within the same region are on the same page, what message does that send to others? Well, I'll answer your second question first. The code of conduct is, is moving along. This is not something that you do by tweet. It is something that is uh, by agreement. And it, it's very, very important because this is an irritant, as I said. And it's no country wants to make this the centerpiece of of relationships. They just simply want to settle it. Now, you know, keep in mind here, everyone always talks about the South China Seas as something to do with China and the rest of ASEAN. That is not true. The South China Seas question involves multiple claimants uh, over similar areas between uh, different countries outside of China. So it, it's an issue that has to be um, addressed regionally and solved regionally. In terms of uh, RCEP and the economics, uh, this is um, you know, something that is going forward. As I said, it's not something they're trying to rush. They delayed it to 2019. There was issues about wording because of some elections and the way that uh, they wanted to word it. It would have triggered uh, the, um, uh, an explanation by the PM, especially in Malaysia, to everybody exactly what the negotiations were. So they, they just put it off until 2019. Uh, they have seven of the 18 chapters uh, pretty much underway. Uh, it's something that looks like it will happen. What's interesting is India is weighing in very heavily under Modi that he wants to see this thing done. Uh, I think they see this as a bulwark against the kind of uncertainty that is now spreading throughout the world. And talking about uh, long-term vision here, something else that came up, the China ASEAN Strategic Partnership visit Vision 2030. Um, sounds very foundational and sounds like they're doing a lot of long-term planning here. Well, absolutely. I mean, you have to take a look at the history of ASEAN. I mean, China and ASEAN have a much more balanced relationship uh, economically. Now, this year you're talking about 280 billion uh, in uh, imports and 235 billion in exports, and that is poised to change. And that's what this these new initiatives are about. As China becomes too expensive because of the labor dividend or you know, rising incomes and the labor dividend is, is kind of slowly melting away, a lot of Chinese companies are going to be relocating, and ASEAN is the natural location for them, whether it's Vietnam or, or uh, Indonesia or Malaysia. So they are looking at a closer um, intertwined regional economic bloc and this is very, very important to their development. They, they recognize this, and they know that a shared future is better than one where they try to go alone. Einar Tangent, always great to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us from Beijing.